Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. So if you have your Bibles, welcome with me, everybody. The people there in TV land, may God bless you. And you will see on my board, um, I want to speak to you about the anointing, a double fault. Um, double fault. And um, so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me um, to Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, and I'm going to read to you a few verses. But before I'm going to read to you, I just want to read to you something about the order. Or the, the order of God. All right. If you go and see on Google what is an order, I want you to hear this word first. As you go to Hebrews 6 verse 20, it says, the arrangement of people or things. It's an arrangement. All right. The order is an arrangement of people or things in relation to each other. In relation to each other. All right. It's an order of people or things in relation to each other according to a particular sequence, a particular sequence, a pattern, and a method. All right, so you've got it. It's an arrangement of people in a sequence. So it forms a pattern. All right, so my first thing that I want to write there down that you need to know is a pattern. Just let me see. Pattern is two Ds. Pattern. All right. You can see a pattern. All right. That's the word order. I order. So Hebrews 6 verse 20, I'm going to read to you. Where Jesus has entered in for us. All right. So Jesus entered in for us in advance. A forerunner. So you get an athletics. These guys that run 5,000 to 10,000 meters around the, uh, the track. You get this first guy that run before them. And he is giving the pace for the people. And after one round or maybe two rounds, they will know this is the pace and then he will go off. You know that. All right. In athletics. All right. For Jesus has entered in for us in advance. He's for. A forerunner having become a high priest forever after the order. With the rank of Melchizedek. So, Jesus is the forerunner. So here, yeah, the first one is Jesus. And he is according to a pattern. I order a pattern. He is the forerunner. All right. There is a sequence. He is the first. You see? All right. And it's forever. So that word, forever. Go to write that down. Forever. Forever means uh, ever and ever and ever. It cannot stop. Verse 15 of Hebrews 7. So it's the next chapter, Hebrews 7, verse 15, and a few verses in that chapter. And this becomes more plainly evident. So we look at something and it becomes more plainly evident. To us, all right. When another priest arises who bears the likeness of Melchizedek, so there is a high priest, all right. A very important key is high priest. How many high priests did you get at one time? One. And how many priests did you have? Many, all right. Actually, there were 24 groups of priests. But there's one high priest. So, listen to this. Um, 
So um, it becomes more plainly to us and evident when another priest arise who bears the likeness of Melchizedek, who is made. So who is made? All right. Not after the law of a carnal command, commandment, but after the power of endless life. He was made, Jesus Christ was made after not a law, not by a law that is carnal, fleshly. But listen here, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment. He is not made by a law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. An endless life. I need to write that down. So it's forever. It's a pattern. Jesus Christ is the first. All right, the high priest. You can see an order. All right. And then it's forever this pattern. And then it has an endless, endless life. Wow, an endless life. So it's important words that I'm giving you keys because I'm not, this is an introduction of what I want to say, but you need to know the keys. All right. An endless life, verse 17. For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus, there was a man called Melchizedek. It is actually God in the beginning. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. And in the time of the Old Testament, someone came to Abram that was called Melchizedek. We believe it was the Son, Jesus Christ, the Word, that became flesh for a moment to make Abram and to give him a promise. And he had an order, a pattern, a sequence. And he, he, he was a high priest. So there were other priests. But he was the first. And then he went away. And many years later, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, all of them came. And yes, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is according to this Melchizedek's way of doing things, pattern or order. He was a high priest. He was a king, a high priest and a prophet, Melchizedek. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a high priest, a king and a great prophet. The prophet of all prophets. All right. But I want you to see a pattern. So, and it's an endless life. For he testified, thou art the priest after the order of Melchizedek. The former regulations is set aside. This is verse 18. Because it was weak and useless. So, on my board, here's a timeline. Here's Jesus Christ. New Testament and Old Testament. Here was priest. A Levitical priesthood. Who was the high priest here in the Old Testament? Aaron, the brother of Moses, was the high priest. All right. And then when his sons were normal priests, when he died, they chose another high priest. And when he died, they chose another high priest. And when he died, they chose another high priest. This is a priesthood. Priesthood means many priests together. But in this time of the Old Testament, Melchizedek came down to earth, who is Jesus Christ. And he made a promise to Abram. And Jesus is according to this order, this pattern, and not the pattern of Levi, of our Moses' brother, and this. All right. Here we're going to read he came, he died. He came, 
he died. He came, he died. And all the priests underneath died. But Jesus is a pattern. He lives forever. And he has an endless life. The law that made Jesus the priest is an endless life. So it's not so hard to understand what I've said so far. The former regulations this way is set aside because it was weak. I read that. Verse 24. But because Jesus lives forever, he, is, he has a permanent priesthood. A permanent priesthood. All right. It's a very important key. Verse 25. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. So we have a permanent priesthood. We have endless life. Permanent. We have forever, forever, no stoppage, all right. He can save completely. They could not save, this priest in the Old Testament could not save the people completely because it was weak, all right, it was weak. But therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives. Endless life forever he always lives. Can you see how much worse is the same? Do you think that is important to know that? If in this chapter permanent, endless life, forever, always live. You see the words. So it's very important to focus on it. It is a priesthood that is different. All right. But I started off by saying, yes, according to I order this, all this, what I said. And the order is called the order of Melchizedek. Who's Melchizedek? Jesus Christ, that was the word that time. Jesus Christ was the name given unto him 2,000 years ago when he was birthed. But the son was in the beginning. He made everything before he came as Jesus Christ. And he came for a order. And he has a priesthood. Hood means many. Yeah, he was a forerunner. You see, all right. It's keys that I'm giving unto you that we need to understand. Verse 26. All right, just let me say this again. He, because he always lives, he can intercede for us. Well, do you know that Jesus is still praying for you? Because he lives. He intercedes for you. So he is constantly with the Father and says, Father, think on Ali. Lord, listen what she is praying. Lord, I stand for her. I intercede for her. Do it. Yes, Lord. My blood flow for her. Yes, Lord. I intercede for her. That's awesome, eh? And it's forever. The high priest, and the priest did this in the Old Testament, but they died. They could not go further. But he lives forever in his endless life and he intercedes for you constantly. It's permanent. Well, that's awesome, eh? Think on it. Jesus is, is interceding for me. Verse 26. Such a high priest. Jesus Christ is a high priest. He's not a priest. He's a high priest. Meets our needs. He meets our needs. One who is holy, blameless, pure, 
set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Jesus is exalted above the heavens. What does that mean? It means whatever you can think on, who stays in the heavens and what is in the heavens, Jesus is above all things that's in the heavens. He is exalted above the heavens, Jesus Christ. And he is a high priest, and he has a priesthood. But I said to you, you must focus on the order, because he is a forerunner. Hello. He is a forerunner. <laughs> he's the guy that runs before and after. He goes off. He's the forerunner. But the order stays. The priesthood stays. Hello. Okay. Acts 10 verse 36. Isn't this beautiful? Well, Jesus, is. you are awesome. All right. Acts 10 verse 36, I'm going to read verse 38 as well as for you. You know the message of God sent to the people of Israel, telling them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. So the message that we proclaim is Jesus is the Lord of all. How God, verse 38, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. So was Jesus the Son of God? Yes, speak with me. Is Jesus God himself? Yes, because the word was with God and the word was God. John 1. Jesus Christ, all right, was anointed by the Father. I don't think it was necessary in my human mind for God the Father to anoint Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is God. But he did. So, it's very important because he wants to show us something. He came according to a order, a pattern. He's a high priest. If he's a high priest, there needs to be priest. There's an order. There's a pattern. Jesus is according to the pattern of Melchizedek. What is that order? It's an endless life. It is forever, always lives. It's permanent. You see that word? I say it over and over again so that it can fell in your heart. What I say? The God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Two things. With the Holy Ghost and with power. So I write there, two. What is double fault means? Double means two. Two. I want you to see it. Double fold two. Okay. It means two. With the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went by doing good and heal all who was oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Isaiah 10 verse 27 is Old Testament. Two. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost and with power. Isaiah, Old Testament 10, verse 27. All right. So the Father anointed Jesus. You see that word? All right, I'm going to write here. I anointed. Anointed. What is my theme? Anointed. What is it? Double full. I want you to see that. Anointed double fold. The Father anointed Jesus 
two things with the Holy Ghost and with power. You see? Okay. Isaiah 10 verse 27 says, And it shall come to pass in that day. Always that day speaks of this day. Because this is an Old Testament prophet prophesied this side. That day. It will come to pass. His burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. In that day. His burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. And his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Anointing. Anointing means oil wrapped upon you. That's anointing. All right. Anointing wrapped upon you. But I said anointing double fold. Double means two. God the Father anoint Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Twofold. Okay. The things that's on our neck and our shoulders, the yoke will be lifted and destroyed by the anointing. The anointing is double fold. The things on our neck and shoulders that we are carrying will be lifted and shall be destroyed by the anointing. The anointing is double fold and it's two things by Holy Ghost and power. Psalm 89 verses 2. I'm speaking these things so that we can understand and then I'm going to make it clear for us what it's all about. Psalm 89 verse 2. It says, I will declare that your love stands firm forever. All right. Can you, can you look here to me? All right. Listen to the words again, forever. Listen to that words, Lorne. I will declare that your love stands forever. That you establish your faithfulness in the heavens itself. Verse 3. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. So, Psalm is written now by David. And it's an Old Testament scripture that I'm reading. But Psalms is a prophetic word. By David was a prophet and a king. And when David wrote a song, Psalms means a song. He wrote about himself, but actually prophesying about Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is David. When David wrote a song, about David, he wrote the song about Jesus Christ. He's prophesying about Jesus Christ. So, you said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. So the father sworn an oath to David, his servant. Verse 20, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. So the father did anoint David as king this time. Is it true? But this is a prophetic word where David is Jesus Christ. And David wrote a song about Jesus Christ who will be anointed by the father. <laughs> it's Demakar. <laughs> but are you with me? Okay. Listen, he's prophesying there is coming a time in that day where the yoke will be lifted from the neck and the shoulder, and it will be by the anointing. Now David is writing a song, and he sings a song, and he says, I have found David my servant. He speaks now as God. I have found 
David, my servant, speaking actually of Jesus Christ. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. With whom my hands shall be established. With whom my hands shall be established. So the work of God's hands will be established by whom? Jesus Christ. And he will be David, who is anointed. And the anointing will lift up the yoke on your shoulders and stuff. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of the wickedness afflict him. It means Jesus Christ will be pure, he will be righteousness, and he will never have sin. And Satan will have no influence on Jesus Christ. I have found David my servant, says the Father. With my holy oil I have anointed him. Verse 21. Who, with whom my hands shall be established. My handiwork shall be established by him, Jesus Christ. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of the wickedness afflict him. Verse 23, I will beat down his foes or enemies before his face. I will smite those who hate him. Verse 24, my faithfulness and my mercy and loving kindness shall be with him. And in my name shall he, his horn be exalted. His great power of prosperity shall be conferred upon him. Ain't that beautiful? This is what the Father is saying about Jesus Christ, but it is a song of David writing a song to sing. And he says that Jesus Christ will be called David. About the anointing that will be upon Jesus Christ. All right. So I give you keys. And I say to you many things. Keys that must stuck in you as an introduction. Because when I read these verses, that what I want to say to you, you must say, Oh, I see. You got it. All right. Psalm 54, verse 7. Psalm 54, verse 7. In this sermon and this te message, te teaching, um, it is actually the whole teaching is an introduction to a last scripture that I want you to know. <laughs> All right. So, for your love, righteousness, and hate, wickedness, therefore God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with oil of joy. You are anointed by anointing with oil of joy. Leviticus 8 verse 30. Leviticus 8 verse 30. Okay, so this is very important now because now we are actually finished with the introduction. Like I said, it was keys that you need to uh, remember. All right, remember, uh, remember. All right, because the important things is coming now. It says, and Moses took some of the anointing oil. You hear the anointing oil? Moses took some of it. And some of the blood which was on the altar and spring it on Aaron. Aaron was the high priest. All right. It's an order. It was a high priest. On Aaron and his garment. There is the thing that I want you to know. Moses took some of the anointing oil 
and some of the blood which was on the altar and spring it on Aaron. Listen to the words what I'm saying. And his garments. And upon his sons and their garments also. So Moses consecrated Aaron and his garments. And his sons and his sons' garments. Hello. Can you see there a pattern? Can you hear a pattern? What is it? On him and the garment. On the sons who is the priest and the garments. Hello. And the Father anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. Twofold. Was it right? Was it true? All right. Now, in the Old Testament, when the high priest started, Aaron was the first high priest of the Old Testament, and Moses was his brother, the leader, and he anointed, he took oil, anointing, oil is anointing, it's oil, and blood of the altar, mingle it and throw it on his brother Aaron, the high priest. And on his garments. On the priest, on his sons, and his garments. Two. Double fold. It's an order that we must not miss. Hello. That's why I said to you, what is an order? Oh. It is a sequence, a pattern of people or things in relation to each other, standing next to each other. A high priest means there is priest. But Jesus is a high priest of who? Who is the priest? the priest. We are the priest. We are the priesthood, and he is the high priest. And there is a pattern that we need to know. I, a pattern. It means a way of doing things. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and with power too. He is the high priest. We are the priest. Hello. We are the wood. Exodus. 29, 29. Listen to, listen to the words. And the holy garments. Close. Oh, my honor is so fail. No, my input. The holy garments of a oral shall pass to his descendants who succeeds him to be anointed in them and to be consecrated and ordained in them. Hello. Watch here. So Moses took oil and blood, throw it in Aaron and his clothes, garments. When Aaron died, there was another high priest. He had to wear Aaron's clothes. When that high priest died, he wear that clothes of our Aaron. Hello? It's an order. It seems if God had in the Old Testament an endless life flowed through the garments because the man died. I cannot take you as a corpse, but your garments is still there. Hello? Is it true? So Exodus 29, verse 29, says to us something about the order. Oh, the high priest here at the end uses and wears the clothes of our on the first one. Because it speaks of the garments that was anointed at first, and it speaks of this endless life. Endless life will flow in the garments. In the man it will die, but in the garments 
it will not die. There's a transfer on the garments. Hello. Jesus was anointed. Hello. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Two. Two full. All right. And the holy garments of our Aaron shall pass to his descendants, who succeeds him, descendants, plural, who succeeds him, to be anointed in them, and to be consecrated and ordained in them. Isaiah 61, 61 verse 1. Isaiah 61 verse 1. My last scripture, and it's about three or four verses, but my last scripture. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to open up the prison of them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to conform, comfort all that mourn, all that people to mourn. So, 2,000 years ago, Jesus would stand in the temple and he will prophesy or he will um, speak about this prophecy of Isaiah 61. As he stood in the temple, he says, the anointing of the Lord is now upon me to preach the good news unto you. And this is now fulfilled, what Isaiah prophesied, but I'm reading you Isaiah 61. All right? And the prophecy is to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. That day of vengeance speaks of this. The day of vengeance, God venge, revenge, the blood of the nations. Vengeance. All right. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Mourn means crying. Who is in Zion? Who is Zion? Us, the city. To give unto them beautiful ashes. We sung that. Sing it. Do you remember our first song? The oil of joy for a, a morning. The garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. A planting of the Lord that he might be glorified that they might be called trees of righteousness. That they might be called trees. What is a tree? It's a boom of righteousness. The Lord has anointed me to preach the good news, to set the people free, to deliver, to heal. All right, And then he says, he is going to give us garments of praise that they might be called trees of, they might be called trees of righteousness. A planting of the Lord, that the Lord might be glorified. They must be called the tree of righteousness so that the Lord may be glorified. Verse 6. But ye shall be named priests of the Lord. Hello. But you shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourself. So, let's stop there because before I'm reading the last scripture verse. Listen, Jesus 
is according to an order, a pattern. A order means a pattern, a sequence. He is a forerunner. He is a high priest. That means there is many priests. According to his pattern. Who is the priest? And you shall be named priest. And ministers. According to which pattern? The pattern of Jesus Christ and Melchizedek. We cannot be according to another pattern. Because Jesus was according to a pattern of Melchizedek. He is the high priest and we are the priest. So we are also according to that pattern. What is that pattern? It's forever. All lives. It's a pattern of endless life. That's the law that's upon us. Endless life. It is permanent. How was Jesus anointed? Oh, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and with power. Two times. You see? You've got it? It will break the yoke upon the shoulders of man. The anointing will break the yoke off from the shoulders and from their uh, backs. All right, the yoke by the anointing. Jesus Christ is according to a pattern and an order. His order was he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and with power two times. All those things I said to you because of this. Isaiah 61 verse 10. Like I said, my whole sermon and teaching is for us to get keys, for us to see something. All right, it's, op it's coming, it's coming, it's going to open. Okay, it's going to open for our last verse. This is what I want to say to you. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be rejoiced in my God. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. Garments of salvation. All right. He has covered me with robes. What is a rope? A garment, another word for a garment, of righteousness. Two. Moses, come here. I'm God. I want you to anoint your brother, Aaron. Anoint him and his garments. Two, an order, a pattern. Anoint his sons and their garments. Two, when you die, they must wear your garments. Pattern. When he dies, he must wear his garments. Pattern, an order. Jesus is according to an order. He's the forerunner. We must be also according to the order of Jesus Christ or Melchizedek. An endless life, a pattern. Jesus Christ was anointed by the Father, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, and with power, two times. Now it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord who shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation, and he hath covered me with robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh herself, uh, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So, 
I hope you have understand what I said so far. All right. Just bringing the thing now together. <laughs> All right. All men that will come and belong to the Lord Jesus Christ needs to wear two robes, two garments. Must be anointed double fold. It's the order. It's the order of Melchizedek. It was the order of Aaron. The first thing is, anoint the man. Anoint the man with the Holy Ghost. But anoint his garments with power. Because this will be the garments of salvation. It will save me. The man, I will anoint him, and it will bring, take off the yoke upon him. On his shoulders, because it's anointing that will break off the yoke. But, there's a pattern. I want you to see, Jesus Christ was anointed with power as well. You will wear a robe of salvation to save you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and in you. And now you will be saved. You will have salvation. And the yoke will lift you. But there is another anointing that you need. It's anointing of power. Where you become a tree of righteousness. A planting of the Lord. That anointing is power that will be upon you. And then you will be having the rope of righteousness. Because it's the rope of righteousness that are transferred. You will die. When I die, it's gone. But when my clothes is still here, So the one is focusing on Aaron and the son. And the other one is focusing on the garments of Aaron and the sons. The, 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 the things that the person is wearing. I am anointed. But maybe I die. What stays? My clothes. My garments. That's why he had to, Moses, anoint the man and the garment. The garments is the thing that stay. <laughs> That's the thing that people can wear. When I die, Aaron, the high priest took that garment. When he died, this high priest took that garment. So the garments of righteousness speaks of the transfer. From one man to another man. It speaks of ministry. And that's why Moses had to anoint the man. You will be free. But God anointed uh, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. He was anointed himself. So there is verses that will say. Oh the Holy Spirit. You have the anointing. And the Holy Spirit within you. And you don't need to be taught. That is one garment that you are wearing. But you need to wear another garment. The garment of power. Where the Holy Spirit anoint you. And that is the part of transfer. There's many preachers that have the Holy Spirit. But they do not have the power. There's many Christians that are anointed with the Holy Spirit. They are set free. No sin. The, the yoke is off. But they are not anointed with power. The anointing of power is the thing that transfer and help people to break through in their thing. That's the thing that stays. You must see this as a spiritual thing. So, it's almost like I will went to the old age home. I'm there physically. And now I can pray for them. But what, of, what side of me is transferring the glory and the anointing that's on my life upon them? This garment and not that garment. When, because I, when I leave this 
Holy Spirit is with me. But there's something else upon them. The power that I release upon them. Because I'm called, I know, oh, so anointing is two things. It's something inside of me that wherever I will go, it will help me. But there needs to be anointing upon me, clothed, a garment upon me, where I can leave it. And it can be transferred. Where they will wear a garment of salvation. Oh, thou say. But there is also robes of righteousness that we will wear. What we can wear. That means it's a little bit different than only salvation. Do you know these two levels? Salvation, you are saved. And there's other people that are righteous before God. Now you want to say to me, yes, but remember the blood of Jesus Christ made us righteous. Yes, the righteousness is imputed unto you. It means you don't have to do anything. But it's also something that you put on. Because it says, it's like a bridegroom that decketh himself. Jesus is the bridegroom. We are the bride. And with ornament. And the bride adorn herself with her jewels. Jesus wants to use us. He wants to take the anointing. And use it upon us and within us. And let it move from one to another. And that's why the anointing is double full. The anointing is double full. It means twice. What is twice? What Moses had to do with his brother. Holy Ghost. And then, what did he do too? He baptized them with power. This one and this one is an order, a double fold order. It is a way that God does things. And Jesus is according to a specific pattern. That pattern is endless. It will never stop. It's permanent. Jesus is a forerunner. As a high priest, we are priests. And we must go on. What must we go on? We must go on like he was going on. Be anointed by the Holy Spirit as person himself and with power. We need to be anointed as person ourselves and with power so that we can have ropes of salvation this side for ourselves and ropes and garments of righteousness for others where the power will be on this rope who can carry from one man to another man from one man to another man because we are a priest wood a wood you are priest last week you remember when I said to you you are priest I'm not the priest I'm a gift for the priest. But you are the priest. We are a wood. He is our high priest. And you need to go. Oh, if Jesus have a double anointing upon him by God the Father, then I need the double anointing. This side is the one that he transferred to keep this one going on. That's why they had to wear the garments. They had to wear the first garment. Because this is the thing that are transferable. This thing is not transferable. It's for yourself. Uh, I tried my best to explain it. Does it make sense for you? Huh? I hope you can see. It. So, some people say, man, I will pray and say, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come upon me. 
thank you, Holy Spirit. Come upon me. Then they will say, oh, my goodness. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is within you. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is in me. I have that garment on. But something happened to me when I said, come, Holy Spirit. Why do you sing, come, Holy Spirit, I need thee? Don't you know you're wrong? No, I'm not wrong. <laughs> Why do you ask the Holy Spirit to come? <laughs> because I've got revelation. Yes, wherever, if I'm at pick and pay, the Holy Spirit's in me. It is for me. And I have salvation. But I wear also the rope of, of, of righteousness as this rope was passed on. I can be clothed with glory and power and I can pass it on upon you. And as I left the old age home, I said to you, them, tonight or tomorrow, wherever you are, remember, I'm not here, but God is here, and His glory is in this place, because I preach here, and I pray, and I ask the Holy Spirit to come, to, so take hold of that. You see? It is the jacket that I will leave there, that can transfer things. So now I will go back Friday, and then I will, yeah, they will say, oh, at night I had pain. And then the one lady said to me, oh, I remember you said, no, say no to this pain. So I did, and you won't believe me, the pain left me. I said, yes, I know. Hello. True. You are the priest. No, it is for your salvation. But you need to carry something more that you can leave. It's double anointing. Hallelujah. I rest my case in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.